so now you can hear the second pair of footsteps, I think, but you don't know who it is. So I have somebody to introduce to you here this morning. I think you were on the Sunrise Phone Shop before, yeah? Uh, first time. First time, first time. First time, first time, first time. So we're here at the Sea of Galloway. A lovely morning. The visible sun disk is delayed because of the heavy cloud. But that's fine. Had a lovely swim here this morning in the Sea of Galilee. And then came down through the live stream and guess who's here? Hey. Zach Miller. You came all the way from Nazareth this morning to be at Sunrise Stroll and Chat. I did. How long was the drive? About 30 minutes, but very much worth it. I'm going to go on the other side of you because the people want to see the sunrise. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> see they want to see you as well. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I came from Nazareth. Uh, 30 minute drive, not bad. And uh, what better place to 30 start? minutes drive? Yeah. Hey, that's a great correction. I always say 40 minutes, no traffic, but I mean, obviously, at what time did you leave? Uh, 5.20. So you were here at 10 to 6? Yep. Wow, there's the sun. Here comes the sun. It's all right. Yep. Uh, yeah, I mean, what better place to spend the morning? Uh -huh. In my opinion. So you're, uh, you're uh, a volunteer, is that right? Yes, uh, I serve, serve in many ways, I think. Uh-huh, uh, that's great. Yes, uh, right now I'm employed by a sports ministry. Okay, what's uh, the name of the sports ministry? Uh, MAI, Missionary Athletes International. Okay, and what do you guys do? And we use sport to bring people together. Uh-huh. Uh, while always having the end goal of sharing the gospel, whether that be through word or deed. Uh-huh. Uh, and so I grew up loving sports, and it became a way where my love for the lord and my uh, passion for the, the game and enjoyment of competition could be put together uh, and it seems lots of people in the world like the game of football so it's nice hey, so you're uh, football not basketball oh uh, yes football. Yeah, i mean the original football what americans would call soccer now you just said a word there that most people wouldn't get you said yanni yeah. <laughs> yes uh, so what does yanni mean uh in learning arabic and working with arab youth around nazareth uh -huh. um, yanni is technically to mean but uh, it's how americans will use like in between yes. things yeah 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 so you hear yeah. it a lot you usually use kilo <laughs> yes you hear you hear uh, you hear it a lot and um, so uh, i was just impressed that you have that kind of spontaneously uh, in your diction uh, yeah it's been fun i never as an american you know growing up i never thought i'd leave uh, the states or live elsewhere where were you, where were you raised originally uh, northern virginian area uh -huh. in DC. Uh -huh. uh, but I've lived a lot of places. We had a group of kids from uh, young people, uh, young professions here from um, from the DC area on Friday, no, on Thursday or Friday, I think it was, yeah. Passages group? No, okay. no, no different group, you, professionals. You pastors, usually students. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I lived all over, but uh, home would be Northern Virginia. Mm -hmm. And uh, just getting able to, uh, being given the gift and opportunity of living abroad and learning another language has been. Probably one of the greatest, like, accomplishments or joys of my life. Uh -huh. so, so good, so good, uh, Zach, to have you here Pleasure. again, Thank you visiting. So Zach has been here before once or twice, I think, or how many times, I don't know. Uh, maybe ten. Yeah, I know, come on. <laughs> really? Yeah, in terms of touring with groups and walking I know, but, ah, uh, okay, you become with different groups. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. The Magdala is always a very special place to bring people. I, I love hearing that. <laughs> and I'm not just saying that to make your head big or something. <laughs> no, I, I'd have to get a bigger head. <laughs> Uh, but, so why do you like Magla? Uh, one, the story of finding the synagogue okay. uh, is very special because okay. it was unexpected. Okay. So a fun little blessing from the Lord. Uh -huh. um, I love the celebration of the women of Jesus' life. Uh -huh. uh, my mother was very impactful in my faith as uh -huh. one of many. Uh -huh. But so uh, I actually got to bring her here in 2019. Uh -huh. And it was a very, um, it's a very special moment. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then the church is beautiful, and we're on the Sea of Galilee. I okay. Mean, come on, man. Well, your mom's going to like this video. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go across the Mississippi. <laughs> You're from Washington, so you need to cross the Mississippi to get to North America. So we have our own little Mississippi here. So today is a great day with readings. Uh, it's a, it speaks to my heart a lot because 50 years... Oh, there's a big catfish, look. A what? I don't think I got them on the camera. Maybe some people were smart enough to see them, but they love the colder, wa colder water here. This water's coming out of the ritual baths. 
Okay. We pump it out all the time. Imagine in, in the middle of July, no rain since late March, maybe there was something in April, mm. and, uh, and the water is still there, you know, coming. That's a big deal. So anyways, um, so the readings are all about the shepherd today, and we have that incredible psalm that everybody loves. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Mm. And I just think about all of us, you know, maybe there are some times that we kind of... Uh, feel down, we feel nobody cares about us, mm. we feel what we're doing, it's a waste of time, it's a, nobody's listening. All different kinds of valleys. Sometimes depression, people have, they look for, for solutions, you know, mm. and then you have, uh, you know, a, a closing of a company and you lose work, or housing market changes and your poor mortgage is in trouble. Something I learned when you're in those emotional moments and things are tough. Something I learned being around the Nazareth village um, is about how sheep actually won't drink from moving water. They need still water. Really? Yeah. And so they're so skittish uh, that they need still water. So that verse where it says, he leads me beside still waters has that deeper element of... Okay, I didn't know that detail. Brings me to a place of rest. Brings me to a place of quiet and solitude. At home, we obviously had water troughs so the water was still, mm. even in stormy weather, because the water would be down a few inches from the surface. I didn't know that detail about sheep, so I'm a farming boy, and I learned something from a Washington, D.C. guy about farming. <laughs> that's cool. Hey, you're always learning, right? Yeah. So that's very interesting, and he leads me to still waters, a nice detail there Zach has brought out. Mm. Because obviously the experience of the shepherding here was more with sheep and goats across the Middle East in this desert climate. And so we have that um, beautiful thought there that he leads me by still waters. So everybody knows that hymn, so we leave it with you. And then for people like me, Jeremiah comes clobbering and he says, you're bad shepherds. <laughs> What's going on here? And you're a shepherd too, Zach. If you're doing work with young people and you're doing it through sports mm. and they see this tall American kid here and he's older than a few years and he's actually doing sports full time and they could only wish they could be playing sports full time instead uh, of going to school. <laughs> uh, the funny thing is, is when you grow up loving the sport and you think, okay, I'll coach. You actually never get to touch the ball at practice. You tell them what to do and they get to play with the ball. Uh, I'm sure you get time to and play. Give me a break. <laughs> you stand there uh, and uh, wish you could be young again. Uh -huh. What do you mean wish you could be young? How old are you? 33. 33? Wow, that's a special age around these places. Right. Uh-huh, interesting. You know that, uh, what's his name? Alexander the Great died when he was 33. Yes, I did. I did know that detail. Uh -huh. Because I was amazing that Jesus was crucified as well when he was 33. Yeah, that's the understanding, the tradition, right? Mm-hmm. Excellent, excellent. Well, let's keep walking along here, Zach, because this is sunrise stroll and chat. You can't get lazy now. You have to get the ball and start uh, shooting boy. some hoops. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what sport did you play as a kid? Everything. Uh -huh. My favorite was soccer. So as a coach, well, how would you read the readings today, the readings of shepherding? Ooh. Maybe you have people that help you in the coaching, like you have a little team of assistants. Yeah, uh, I have gotten to coach with a friend here and, and help him. He's the head coach and I assist him. So I've gotten to be in the assistant role as well as the head role. It's always nicer to have somebody with you. Um, to Actually, the Bible verse of the day uh, from the Bible app is where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there with them. So just and what happens in the gospel today that we have for this under readings? In Mark, right? Um, they're together. Uh, the disciples have just finished their big mission. Their, their coaching. Big, uh, 70, yeah, their coaching session. <laughs> and he says, let's, let's get a break. Let's try to get away and find some solitude. But the crowds continue to follow him as they're enamored by everything Jesus is doing. And he has, uh, as we connect it to Jeremiah, he has pity on them and he sees them and shepherds them. And this is wonderful. You know, there Jesus models also the care that a tired worker needs because they're exhausted and they also have to think, they want to share with him what they've accomplished, right? Yeah, and they're excited about everything they've done. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and being a coach, you can definitely have good shepherds and some shepherds maybe who aren't the best, but uh, the coach makes, the leader makes a big impact.
Uh huh. You know? I love walking here in the crunchy yeah, shells down here. You know, is that sand? Uh, I don't know. Look, like seashells. It is actually all seashells. All this spot here. Do you want me to hold it? Just me? Come on, we want to no, see no. you too. No, 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 no. They don't want to see me there. They know me. <laughs> they know me already. Wow, look at these amazing. All these tiny seashells. Like it's nice to put a visitor on the screen, you know. But uh, actually, it's funny thing about Facebook and YouTube. Well, if YouTube is different, but Facebook is like called Facebook, right? Yeah. And an awful lot of people put their face there all the time. And I, I guess that's because it's Facebook. But I kind of like to be in the background. Mm. I gotcha. But it's also nice to have you walking along here because I can't do that with myself during the daytime, you see, when or during the morning in the sunrise drone <laughs> jet because uh, it, it, it's a different kind of a, a situation. Yeah. So then, um, as a coach, uh, how would you see the connection with shepherding? You know, Jesus takes his disciples down and has them rest, has them tell the story in coaching sports with kids yeah it's it's a it's a guiding right a shepherd leads and guides by his voice by his instruction sheep will follow and so the sheep are there to make their own decision uh you hope that they listen to the shepherd because he's trying to get them to the right place so i very much see that with coaching not only like a big thing in terms of being a person who loves the lord and love sports it's not just uh you know how good you are at the game but how you play it oh, some, some here. it's an egyptian goose yeah they're happy because the the egyptian goose has some friends here in the circle of people that follow the live stream uh, so they're able to greet each other there you go. An egyptian goose, I have yeah. never... but this egyptian well, there's a whole family of them here or a bunch of them they're it's almost a becoming a tribe the uh, yeah there could be a whole family here yeah actually yes they're actually two little ones. They, they were born about a month ago, maybe. Okay. Or a little less. Is he getting them scared? No, but I think this one could be sick and don't touch them or anything, you know, because uh, you never know how to have them. Might have that's true. Avian flu. Oh, there's the little guy. But they're really, gro they're really growing up. Yeah, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. <laughs> well, actually, there were four. There were four or five of them in this batch. Mm. Now we see three, but there could be some more there. I'm wondering where the parents are. And he's a shepherd, man. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's him. Well, it's the same principle, you know, that all of nature is one. Mm -hmm. Sorry, bud. And I mean, that's a great theme of the We're not here to ruffle your feathers. Uh, no, that's okay. <laughs> quack, 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 quack. <laughs> Sometimes I speak a different di dialect than they do. Ah, uh, okay. So they don't always answer. Um, but as I was saying, you know, not only if you're your talent of the game, but it really matters to me how the boys or girls, um, I could, uh, how they play the game, you know, how their heart is for their teammates, how they treat the other team, that it's not, it's not the enemy. That was, when I was growing up, that was always something in my head, just to be fair, to be sportsmanlike. Um, so it's not just about being good. <laughs> It's much more enjoyable that way. I play pickup with some friends um, from time to time. And man, the, the fights they get in over nothing, over ego, over whatever. And all the time, I'm just like, guys, relax. Like, we're all here to enjoy. We work all week. We just want two hours where we can enjoy the game we like to play. You know I mean? Oh, there's, there's the mom, our dad, coming in there to the end. So the family is back. So that guy was out doing a special mission. Maybe he was sent his ambassador to some other Egyptian keys, <laughs> someplace else. So the, the second reading as well, just before we wrap up here, because we're probably out of time now, is um, the letter to the Ephesians, this great, um, this great, uh, re the expression of the healing of the wounds of humanity and the hostilities and the angers and the aggressions and especially in our time worldwide there's so many aggressions and and brokenness so much division and hostility i just love this reading i encourage everybody today to to take out this reading and it's obviously in a very specific context historically mm. this um unity that this reconciliation that that jesus has worked 
uh, obviously between the the chosen people and the nations which is the primary meaning but obviously we can take a lot of spiritual motivation from this that any division even in the kitchen or like you say with a group of guys that are playing basketball and their their soccer uh, soccer not not real football like Irish football, not Irish, not Gaelic football, not American football, not rugby. Yeah, first one, uh, soccer. The foot in the ball. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if that was the first one. Well, anyway, um, they are, they are, some of them have have long-standing traditions. The Irish sports have tremendous tradition. I mean, it goes back to the Irish legends before Christianity. Oh, so we're going okay. back to a thousand years. You guys might be the originals. Then. Yeah. So England is a much younger country mm. than Ireland. So the um, uh, people you know yeah, yeah. they're a mix of peoples they're a mix of anglos and saxons and picts and all, all kinds of things that we yeah, even we, we even put in some irish gene genetic enrichment there so the formula could be better you know <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> well that's again you see the ego coming out and we want to be one right we want to be we want to be one in in and we have this great expression as christians one in the lord Mm. And then in the kitchen, the football field, in the in the workplace, mm. to build that unity. I think we we'll leave it like that for today, people. I invite you to read the readings. A little bit special today, having such a guest with us. Mm. God bless you guys. So let me do this famous selfie we do at the end every always. See you later, alligators. And Have a wild, blessed crocodile. Have a blessed Sunday. Delighted you joined us. A special greeting to all the YouTubers. We got over 4,000 uh, subscribers this past week. So hey, a few days ago, we we uh, did a little video. I, I don't think it got to so many people because that morning I had slipped in, so I started late, <laughs> was posted late. Might have thrown some people off their routine, but they might like to see it again. Uh, God bless you.